Howdy, hi there, folks. It's your buddy Brian Kehoe from Dunlop Manufacturing, and today I'm going to go through some of these waz and uh, give you a little bit of information. Hopefully, I'll be able to demonstrate them properly so that you can uh, take this information and make the quality decision on your crybaby purchase. So what I'm going to start off with is um, our standard GCB95, which is our standard issue crybaby. In 1982, Jim Dunlop Sr. and Jimmy Dunlop drove down to Van Nuys, Sepulveda Boulevard, and when they purchased the crybaby name, they bought it from the Thomas Organ Company. They got a big giant truck, and they loaded up all the machinery and all the parts and all the filing cabinets, everything, and brought it back up to Benicia, California, where we currently make these pedals. So we're gonna start off, like I said, with the GCB 95. Um, one thing I wanna get into really quickly is that the difference between all these wah pedals, some are gonna be really subtle, some are gonna be pretty wide. What differentiates the different wah pedals is the range of the frequency from heel down to toe down, the cue point, which is the size of the focus frequency as it sweeps through the range, and um, also the inductor, or on some, the lack of an inductor, and some of the componentry that create the voice and the uh, uh, tone profile for each individual wah. So we're gonna go through the Crybaby GCB 95. I have the single coil uh, selected. We're going through this deluxe, and this is what it sounds like bypass. And now with the wah. So it has a pretty wide range. Here's heel down, toe down. Here it is with a little distortion. That has no other functionality except for the on-off switch and the rocker. Moving over to the Hendrix Wah, this one has a little bit of a lower range. It's a little bit darker. Uh, they chose that range because uh, they listened to a bunch of the Hendrix stuff and they talked to some of the engineers that worked with them at the time. And uh, this one has a little bit less of a cue point, so it's not as quacky, and it's a little lower in the frequency range. Heel down, toe down. In comparison with the GCB95, Okay, so what we have next is the 535Q. This has a bunch of different features. It has a six point selector, which selects six different ranges. It has a volume boost that gets up to 16 dB of boost. It also has a Q selector where you can make the Q really quacky or you can make it soft and a little more vintagey and warm. It also has a kick switch that engages the boost. And here is what the first position sounds like. Do it without the distortion. So as I click through this, you're going to hear all the different... A lot bassier there. Here's what it sounds like with the boost. All right, so we call that one the Swiss Army knife of our WAS because of all the different functionality. Um, moving over to the MC404, which is a CAE WAS. Bob Bradshaw, noted uh, pedal board builder out of Los Angeles, works with all the, the big stars and touring acts. He wanted a specific sound, and he wanted two different inductors. An inductor is uh, one of the parts of the circuits that um, gives the, the tone and the personality of a wad. It's kind of like a pickup. So, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not a scientist. I play one on TV. But uh, we have two different inductors on this one. One is a yellow facel, which is more of a vintage sound. It has a, a higher uh, frequency range and a lower 
Q rate, so it's not as quacky. And then there's a darker range on the red facel that has a higher Q point. And you can switch between the two different facels. This also has a built-in MC401 boost that you can get up to 20 dB of boost. And then here's your uh, boost and gauge switch on this side. We'll start off with the yellow facel, which is a little more vintage sounding to me. Here it is, uh, dry. Heel, toe. In comparison to the Hendrix, heel, toe. Now here's the red facel, which is going to have a bigger range. It's a little darker and has more of a cue point. It's going to be a little more quackier. We'll go back to the yellow facel. And now we'll go back to the red facel and with the boost, fully on. That's just the boost. There's no other distortion. It's just the pedal into the amp. So moving over to the Bonamassa crybaby, Joe Bonamassa has a certain, oh, he has a certain flair. He's got a sound in his head that he wanted with a, with a crybaby. So we custom made it. It's got through hole componentry for guys that uh, want to do mods. It's a lot easier to get into the circuit board with that. And it also has a halo inductor. The halo inductor, like I said before, an inductor is kind of like a, a pickup. The halo in particular was really, really microphonic. The good news is, is that it's resonant and it has a lot of cool stuff going on with feedback. The bad news is with the microphonics, it can squeal and can kind of get uh, out of hand. So what we did is we dipped it in epoxy to kind of calm down that squealing, that microphonic feedback that can happen. And we did it in a way that we didn't want to lose all the, the lively characteristics of that component. So uh, it's much like dipping a pickup in wax to keep it kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, keep it from getting out of hand, as it were. So what the, the functionality of this is, there's an internal switch that can go from true hardwire bypass or not true hardwire bypass. It also has an input buffer and output buffer, so it plays nice, nice with uh, vintage fuzzes and stuff like that. Uh, just a little, little tidbit, a little note, Joe Bonamassa actually uses this not true hardwire bypass, which is interesting. But this is what it sounds like. <laughs> Uh, it's a very similar frequency range to the Hendrix. It's a little darker, it's a little narrower of a range. Here's the Hendrix for uh, reference. And then here is the, bi the Bonamassa. It's got a little bit of a gain stage to it. It's got a little bit more of a cue to it, but it's very similar to Hendrix. Here's what it sounds like with a uh, little bit of distortion. <laughs> That's going to be for guys that, uh, you know, want more quality out of their life. Moving over to the bass crybaby. This was made for bass players, by bass players, but just because it says bass on it, don't let that fool you because this is my favorite crybaby. I use this one all the time. I got a bunch of artists that use it too. It has a very high Q point. It, well, the functionality is that you can adjust the Q point low or high. It also has a 16 dB boost that you can adjust low or high. The other thing about this is there is no inductor. This is uh, patterned after a vintage envelope filter. And instead of the envelope opening um, by, by trigger, by how hard you play, uh, you're actually operating the envelope manually or with your foot, footily, if you will. It also has the, what we call the auto return. So what that means is that as soon as I step on it, it engages. Instead of click onto the button, ow, wah, it just goes wah, and it sounds like this. So you
you can hear that it's really, really deep. It's got a pretty wide range, and it's, I have it set so it has a very, very, very high Q. Here's what it sounds like with a little bit of distortion. That's my favorite. Now, we're gonna wrap this up with the Clyde McCoy Crybaby. 1966, Vox was being distributed and manufactured by the Thomas Organ Company. They were working on making a transistor version of the AC30 because the Beatles had exploded and they wanted to uh, take advantage of that market. They wanted to make a more cost efficient amplifier and they wanted to make a solid state version of the AC30. They were going to change out this mid-range switch, which was an expensive component, and make a circuit that would just be a mid-range pot. While they were going like this and moving that pot around, the guitar player was like, hey man, that sounds cool while he was doing something. Why don't you put that pot in one of these uh, volume pedals and see what happens? And well, that's what happened. They got a crybaby, they got a wah pedal. So at that time, everybody who was uh, distributing Vox got a Vox wah pedal, and everybody who wasn't got a Thomas Organ Crybaby. Same circuit, same everything. What we did is we recreated that sound and that componentry through whole components, original halo condu inductor again, and uh, we came up with the Clyde McCoy. Clyde McCoy was a horn player in the 30s that would use a mute, like a plunger, and wah, 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 wah. And so they wanted to put him on there because they thought that was gonna sell more Crybabies. So here is the Clyde McCoy, which is about as original as you can get. It's going to have a similar frequency range as the uh, original, the Crybaby 95, GCB 95, but uh, a less of a Q point. So just for reference, GCB 95. One more time. My name is Brian Kehoe from Dunlop Manufacturing. I hope that this has helped you with your crybaby decisions. If you have any more questions, feel free to call and contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. <laughs>